Didn't have the mic on, did I? <laughs> oh, have I got to do that all over again? Oh, go on then. Not the countdown. Just a minute. You ready? Ready? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. It, have I pushed a button again? Good morning. It's Thursday, the 3rd of August. 2017 and a warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk in full colour and with sound as well this morning. OK, I forgot to push that button. It's so long, so long since I pushed the button, you see. That's the trouble. It's days, days since we last spoke, isn't it? Days. God's sake, man. And um, <clears throat> yes, what have I done? I've done the date. I've now, I don't know what I've told you and what I haven't now. Um... Oh, that was it. Yeah. So I'm I'm just getting over this minor and it is minor, a minor summer cold, which kind of started off on Tuesday, really. And I, Tuesday, I had the most terrible fatigue, which started not not when I got up. It didn't start when I got I was OK first thing in the morning. Um, but as the day went on, I got really tired. And then I got fatigue. Now, a lot of people confuse fatigue and tiredness as being uh, exactly the same thing, and they're not. Uh, I I do suffer from fatigue. I've got a little something, a little problem. Uh, my mate's got it as well, actually. Uh, and it, it causes us to suddenly get fatigue. And it can generally happen at any time. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, unfortunately. But it's, it's like a complete lack of being able to do anything at all and just tired and you just want to go to sleep and you, you haven't even got the strength to eat or do anything. Uh, I usually try and work through mine and carry on what, whatever's going on. But uh, I do get it occasionally and my, my mate gets it a lot more than I do, actually. And it's a horrible thing. It's not tiredness. Tiredness is when you go, ooh, like that. And... um. Tiredness is what a lot of people get when they're watching this program through boredom. It has to be said. Now, you know, I've told you so many times before, if you've got trouble sleeping, just put a few of my shows on and you'll, you'll be out like a light. You really will be out like a light. So I had that on Tuesday, which, uh, oh, not pleasant at all. Uh, can I just read you this this Facebook update here? Uh, from a friend of mine that I spotted just, just a few moments ago before we came on this morning, uh, from Stuart Craig Brown. Now, Stuart's a vet. He's not, he wasn't my vet. Um, but uh, Stuart is a vet. He, that's what he does for a living. And some of his Facebook statuses are to die for. You know, here we go. So today, I see this woman who has clearly left it a decade too late to get to work, as judged by her outward appearance. So she sits down and opens up what's meant to be her makeup bag. But in reality, it's more of a pot of Play-Doh, some baking flour and a few broken crowns in a pretty little pencil case. So then she then gets this brush out of the size of Elitha's broomstick in Wicked the Musical. <laughs> I then wondered why she didn't ride it to work rather than rush to get the said train. Then she dips it in the baking powder uh, baking flour and dabs it all over the face in motions I can only describe as similar to the dance routine to Wigfield's Saturday Night Disco Anthem. You know that one. Saturday night, da 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 You know that one, don't you? So then the whole train bursts out in a cloud of smoky inhalment as a result. You know, all that powder that comes out of women's bags, dear. I then thought she was going to say that famous line, and tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be. <laughs> As we approached the Tottenham Howe, I was almost hoping she was going to say Adele. But when the smoky air cleared, I looked at her face and she clearly couldn't see what she was doing, even with a mirror. Her eyebrows have almost fallen off below her nostrils and she more, more, looked more like the Go Compare Man. Go Compare! Go compare. Why do ladies persist on doing their makeup on public transport? Get up earlier, love. Trust me, it's worth it. <laughs> so thank you for that, Stuart. He does. He does do. I mean, there are certain people on <coughs> uh, Facebook who do the most amazing Facebook status updates. Funny and hilarious. And I do like those ones. There's so much more interesting than the left-wing trash that put their stuff up there, don't you think? <laughs> All right. 
Let's say hello to some early adopters who are with us this morning. Hello to the lovely Shania on the Isle of Wight. Good morning, Shania, darling. Hope you're well. Uh, Diane Jeb is with us. Hello, Diane. Uh, Ross. Good morning, Ross. Ray Reynolds is there. Morning, Ray. Mark Cording is there. Hope your spider plants are doing all right, Mark. Uh, I've still got that other one for your mum when you're ready, OK? Oh, uh, Mark, as you're there, I might as well tell you while you're there. Uh, those of you that come to the Cams and I karaoke on Sundays, uh, which is doing very well. We did another one Sunday. We, it's every Sunday. Cams and I, Camden Town, 8 till around right about 10.45 every Sunday night. Just to let you know, a little forward warning for the... Oh, no one's told me, have they? Look, why hasn't anyone told me yet? Look, just a minute. Just a minute. Very, very important, dear. Very important. One moment. There we are. There we are. The August Barry Manilow picture. Doesn't he look even better there than he does in the last... You know, every time I turn the picture over, Barry Manilow looks even better in that picture than he does the last one, don't you think? Now, just to let you know, um, August Bank Holiday, which is the... Sunday the 27th of August, we're going to do a late one at the cam tonight. It will start at 8 o'clock as usual and finish at da, 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 2 o'clock in the morning. There we are. So we've got a nice long one. So just get you prepared for that. And I tell you now, because the last, we, we've actually done two bank holidays in there and they were both mega, mega busy. You need to get there early for that. We do um, 8 o'clock start, and it will still be, it's, it's 8 o'clock every week, it will still be 8 o'clock on that bank holiday, but you've got an extra three hours of me doing my stuff, okay? So, not that that's of interest to anyone, I know you're more interested in singing to yourselves than anyone else, uh, but uh, yeah, it'll be 8 till 2 on Sunday the 27th of August, just for that one bank holiday one, just to prepare you for that one. All right, Mark? Okay, doke. Uh, good morning to my niece, Tracy Clifford, who's once again sitting at home. Unfortunately, Tracy, who's my niece, um, she's got two wonderful, three wonderful children now. There's um, George, who's four. There's Emily, who's two or three. And then there's baby James, who's months, just a couple of months old. And she's become more and more like my sister, unfortunately. She sits there all day long <coughs> on this tea having the children fetch her gin and tonics and boxes of chocolates. It's, it's funny how you become your parents, isn't it? It really is. Good morning, Tracy. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, it's, it's the summer cold. Let me have a look here. Um, good morning to Danielle. Good morning, Danielle. Looking lovely with your little baby. There's babies popping out all over the place at the moment. What have you all been up to? <laughs> Stupid question. <laughs> Beautiful babies everywhere. Thank you. Uh, Gavin Matthews. Good morning to Gavin. Rachel Davis is there this morning. Good morning, Rachel. Uh, sorry, there was no sound earlier. I forgot to push a button there. Let me have a look here. Uh, da, 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 da. Good morning to Craig Hart. Oh, there you are, Craig. I've sorted out your photo. Craig sent me in a photo of him and his other half the other day. So here it is. There they are. Look at that. Watching me <coughs> on, their, on their television. <coughs> you need to tidy up those wires at the back of your television, I think, Craig. My God, look, what have you got behind there? On the right-hand side of the screen. <laughs> Is that wires there? Get those tidied up, for Christ's sake, man. Look at the state of it. You would think at least you'd take the dust around before you start sending pictures of yourselves into me, wouldn't you? God's sake, man. Oh, by the way, do you like this? Look at that. Oh, I haven't cut the thing off the side. <laughs> Silly sod. I'll cut that white bit off. Look at that. That is the Queen of England. <laughs> Probably watching this program as we speak. She don't call in though. She's very, very busy signing bits of paper. And she you're wondering where that picture came from, aren't you? I shall tell you in a minute, don't in a minute, don't you worry. Incidentally, uh, I'm still watching that excellent program on Netflix uh, called The Crown. So if you've got Netflix and you haven't seen that yet, watch it. It's really very, very good indeed. The Crown. The bit I've got up to now, if you're if you've watched The Crown, the bit I've got up to, she's just about to, to embark on her world tour of 23 weeks. All right, so give that a view. Morning, Craig. Uh, good morning to Gavin Matthews. Anyone else? Uh, yes, there we are. Cheeky, we had the laptop plugged in. So we, oh, is it a laptop? 
I thought it was a television. Let me have another look. One minute. Uh, where is it? There we are. Is that a, that's not a laptop? Is it? Is that a laptop? Looks like a big telly to me. It's a big laptop. Look at all those wires. Dear me. Good morning to Duke, who's just joining us as well this morning. Morning, Duke. Hope you're well. Okay. On the Saturday this week, it's been so long since I spoke to you. <clears throat> On Saturday this week, we did the uh, charity for the various um, uh, charitable organisations, Barry Manilow Music Foundation, the Dogs Trust and Cancer Research. That was in Wokingham. And uh, we did that on Saturday. And there were various different methods of raising money there. I was doing the karaoke for, for free. Uh, there was a raffle going on, a tombola. I think there was a darts thing going on as well. There was little items of jewellery to buy. And also there was a book of original uh, paintings. And then, or drawings, paintings, I'm not quite sure which actually. And posters of those paintings. Now, the paintings themselves were like 100, 150 quid. And they were the same size as that. That is a poster, or I don't know what you would call it, a copy perhaps. That is a copy of one of the originals, which I, and I purchased that for £10. Isn't that lovely? I think that's a wonderful, wonderful picture of Her Majesty there. I really do. Isn't it amazing how she carries on, you know, 90, what is she, 90, I don't know how old she is now. Because our old chap has, uh, has stepped down there, her husband, hasn't he? He's gone into retirement. Lazy bastard. Honestly, dear, you could go on at least until you're 100. Fancy stepping down. What are you going to do with yourself now? Continue to make inappropriate comments. I do hope so, because they're hilarious. We love the Duke. We love him. More inappropriate comments. That's what we need because we sit there and we're not offended and we laugh. There's only one lady who's offended by everything. That's Diane Abbott. Bless her heart. God rest her soul. <laughs> oh, she's not dead, is she? I beg your mum. Uh, good morning to Christina. Uh, Gavin says MacBook is hidden behind us. Oh, is it? <clears throat> oh, I see. So that is the telly, is it? Have you got the telly plugged into... It's very complicated. It's all those wires that do me in. What are they all doing? I bet they don't even do anything. You've just got gatherings of wires on the side of the sideboard there, haven't you? <laughs> anyway, back to the charity. So that was all going on, and I bought that for £10. Um, to, it, it was a great night, those of us that were there. But we were very disappointed with the turnout. I think I, I was disappointed anyway. Very, very disappointed with the turnout. Um, uh, they raised £137, which is uh, which is OK. I think we would have raised a lot more. Well, we would have done. But uh, very, very uh, low turnout on that one. So very disappointed. We were dis I was disappointed. I, I, the girls didn't say they were. They were quite, They said they were pleased, but I think they were probably a bit disappointed. Wendy came down all the way from up to north, up from Leyland. Took her hours to get down here in the old car. Um... Uh, but we had a good night and it, it was all right. You know, some of the locals were in and they joined along and uh, we started the singing and there were no gaps in the singing. You know, that kept going all the way through. Matt, who's one who's probably one of our best uh, karaoke singers, if not the best karaoke singer. He was there as well and he sang us a few songs. He got quite popular. You know, I, I was a bit disappointed that he, he I think he was more popular than me. I'm a bit disappointed with that, to be honest. I may have to ban him in future. From my karaoke nights. <laughs> so that was um, so that was on the uh, Saturday. Danielle says my son Bailey is watching me. His one on Christmas Eve. Gosh, little one, Bailey. What's that song? Bailey, Bailey. Da 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 da. -da. Or is that Daily? I can't remember. I'm sure there's a song with Bill Bailey in it. Want them? Go go Bill Bailey. Something like that. I'm not quite sure. So that was Saturday. Uh, Sunday, uh, went to church in the morning and uh, did my um, did my karaoke at the Cams and I on Sunday night. And I noticed um, uh, that the cat, Katie the cat, as you know, uh, she's no longer with us. Uh, she wasn't eating or drinking. Not only that, she wasn't doing her mess either. So I, 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 um, 
you know, went into the kitchen in a little area and there was no mess. Well, oh, I got a little break from the mess today. That's nice. The second time I thought, oh, that's a bit strange. There's no mess. And he got to Monday <clears throat> and then it's Sunday night first. No mess again. And then Monday, no mess, food not touched, water not eaten. She's kind of laying uh, in the kitchen bit, um, quivering, asleep, or seemingly asleep. And I started stroking her and she wasn't moving. I thought, oh dear. And I thought, this, is, this doesn't look good. I'll take her to the vet. So I took her to the vet, uh, as you well know. You saw the, you saw the film on, um, on Monday. And um, he gave me the various options. Uh, uh, first of all, he said, let me just check her sight for you. And he got his torch. I said, I think you're going to find she's blind. Now, I didn't know she was blind, but I had a feeling she was. And he got the torch and shone it in her eyes. Nothing. Blind as a bat. The cat had gone blind. I don't know how long she'd been blind for. My guess is quite some time, because this would explain why she kept walking around in circles and banging into things. She was completely blind. And when it came to food time, generally, if I put the bowl down, she wouldn't notice it. What I had to do was put the bowl down, the food bowl down, and then move her head into position so she could smell it. And then she'd start chomping away. And she would eat quite fast, actually. She'd finish off a whole packet of cat food fairly quickly. But as I say, the last couple of days, she's not been eating at all. <coughs> um, so she had gone blind. Uh, she reckoned she, he, he reckoned she was mainly deaf as well. She was now very dehydrated. So the doctor said to me, um, if uh, we, we can try and rehydrate her uh, by putting drips in her pores, uh, she really won't like that because well, for a start, she's blind. So she so remember, you know, she's only got feel now. She ain't got a clue what's going on. She wouldn't have had a clue what's going on there. So he said um, that, and the other thing was for her to to uh, uh, to go to sleep. Um, and after what she's been through the last few months, you know, recently, more recently, I've noticed she was waking up in her own poo. I mean, and that can't be nice. And we, well, I think we all know that cats are clean creatures, aren't they? They like to be clean. And it's all very well, you know, yeah. The this, this smell used to hit me sometimes when I opened that door. But, you know, it disperses very quickly. You, you, you simply move the cat from there to just put her outside for a few moments, wrap the stuff up and put it in the bin and put another lot down. I mean, it's, it's not hard. It's not hard, really. But once you start waking up in your own mess, it can't be very nice, can it? And for quite some time now, people have been saying, you know, You've got to go and do the right thing, Chris. And I'm, I think, I think I, I think I kept her going as long as she was reasonably comfortable. But once you start waking up in your own mess, you're not eating, you're not drinking. I thought no, and then uh, she has been a through through a couple of little operations actually over time. But then she was much younger then, you know, she was younger then, so I think can cope with that sort of thing now. Um, so I elected to um, uh, let her go to sleep. Now I'm going to tell you what happens now. It's it's nice. You haven't got to turn off. It's not going to be nasty or anything like that. Again, various options were given to me. <clears throat> Say goodbye and walk away. Or um, the one I went for was, he said, I can give her a, a, a sedation injection so she will fall asleep with you. Uh, and then... When she's gone to sleep, leave her with me. Uh, so that's the one I went for. It was a lovely vet, actually. His name's David. He's the one, funnily enough, who's performed the operations on her in the past. Uh, she had her thyroid gland removed. You may remember that. I think it was about three years ago. And it was around Christmas time. And uh, <clears throat> after the gland was removed, she, she went a little bit mad, scatty. She wasn't coping well at all. So she had to go in cat hospital. I think it was around Christmas 2014, 15 maybe, something like that. Just after, just before Christmas, Christmas Eve, they rung up uh, and she said, you, and I used to go and visit her in the cat hospital. And she'd get up and she'd come over 
<laughs> yeah, he's recognised you straight away. The vet used to tell me at the time when I used to go and visit her in the cat hospital, he told me that cats actually react better to humans when they visit them in hospital than dogs do. Isn't that interesting? You would think it would be the dogs, wouldn't you? Anyway, on the Christmas Eve, um, she came out of cat hospital, so I stayed here with her uh, for Christmas on my lap, actually. Uh, instead of going up to meet my sisters that year, so that there's, that was that was probably the, the the main operation that she'd had, you know. Um. So going back to the uh, vet on Monday, so he said, "Okay, well, if that's what you want to do, we'll, we'll do that then." So off he went. He came back in and he had this little injection with him, I and mean, I'm not one for watching injections. Um, and he just stood there. There was no rush. No rush or anything like that, you know. Come on, we got to get this done. There was nothing like that at all, and he just he just uh, came in and and he stood there like that. He said, "All right." I said, "Yeah, yeah, okay then." So I said, "All right then." So he he put the little injection in her in her neck, and um, her her head kind of uh, went round about here to my chest to my heart. There it was. I, I had. Uh, uh, kind of cuddled up against me like that and her head sort of rested against there and as she drifted off to sleep she wasn't put to sleep at this point as she drifted off, off to sleep um, uh, a, a little paw came out like that just stuck her paw out which I held like you would hold a child's hand really so I'm holding her little paw and uh, uh, and she, well about five minutes later, as as the doctor said, he came back in. He says, how are you doing? I said, yeah, yeah all right. He said, oh, I don't think she's quite asleep yet, is she? I said, no. He said, that's okay. I'll come back in another five minutes. Take your time, he said. Okay, so off he went again. He came back. Time he came back, she was fast asleep. And just before she went to sleep, she let out this little sigh. Which went, <sighs> like that. I heard it. I went, <sighs> which was quite nice. He came back in and he said, and uh, he said, okay. I said, yeah, I'm all right. He said, take your time. He said, there's no rush. So I said my goodbyes. And I said, thank you very much to the doctor. And uh, I touched his hand and he said, that's OK. He said, and he waited for me to go and I closed the door and that was it really. And then I paid. Oh, dear me. Uh, oh, yes. Um, of course, you, you, you decide what you want to do with her body afterwards. Uh, I elected to have ashes made. They... Um, do the what's it called uh, they do cremations separately they, they do that separately so you can have your cat's ashes and that, that, I'll take that down to my mum's grave you see um, because it, it was my mum's cat that I took on and um, and that's it really then I paid paid the bill 230 quid that was <laughs> dear me god's sake I, I think I might set up business as a cat thing here uh, it was two hundred and thirty pound, so I paid that, and I came, uh, went, went back outside the vets, and I sat in the car for five minutes or so. You know, you do sort of wondering what it's all about. Sometimes you do wonder what it's all about, and then I went home and um, uh, carried on really, and and that that was what happened. That was exactly what happened. Okay, to the letter there. So uh, a very sad day really, uh, Monday. Tuesday, I did the karaoke on Monday night. And, of course, um, I made uh, the video in the afternoon. <clears throat> that was a recorded video. Your messages uh, that have been arriving are really something else. They really are. Whether it was the public ones or the um, private ones that you sent me through. Indeed, there was a couple of emails as well. And it's really, really nice. I'm not going to read those out. I think they're personal type things, you know. So thank you very, very much for your wonderful, kind messages that you've been sending over the last couple of days. And, of course, Tuesday, the day after, that was my mother's birthday. My mother died in the year 2000. There's a picture of me and mum here. Now, this picture, yes, I know it's old. I'm just going to take a slurp of tea. Hang on. <clears throat> this picture was taken at my sister's second wedding. My sister's been married twice to the same man. <laughs> I had a big row 
got divorced and then got back together again. So that's all good. So that was taken at my sister's second wedding. And uh, there's there's me and my mum looking mischievous, I have to say, don't you think? <laughs> anyway, uh, I lost my mum in 2000. And on her birthday every year, I like to go down to the grave and I take a card and a cake. And that's exactly what I did. So I went down there. I find that a, a bit of a sad day as well. And I go down to the grave and I cut the cake up. And yes, I know I'm going to Slimmer's World at the moment. I know I'm going to Slimmer's World, but I thought, no, it's mum's birthday. And I had, well, I used to have about half the cake and I wasn't that bad. A third. I had just a third of the cake this time, but it was a massive one. So it's a birthday cake, which I got from Asda. There's an Asda, which is right next to the cemetery, which is quite handy, really, if you get peckish. So I had that uh, and a, a cup of tea by the grave, and we had a little bit of a chat. Uh, usually I'll do the grave up on this particular day, but I hadn't had really time to go down to the garden centre and get some little plants and things like that. So I'll probably do that on the next visit, which will probably be sometime next week, I would guess. Um, so I can go and do the plants and the ashes and all that at the same time. Uh, which is quite nice. So that was that was Tuesday, and again I put a little. I always put a little picture off of me sitting next to the grave. If you go on to that particular album within my photos, you'll see all the pictures I've done every year of me sitting by the grave and uh, and having a cake. <laughs> and you see, uh, as as I get older as well. But of course, once we die, we don't get older, do we? Uh, isn't it that that war, that war poem or something? We get older as they don't, or something like that. I can't remember what that is now. I'm not quite sure what that is. Ah, Mark says his birthdays, his mum's birthdays on the 1st of August as well. Well, I hope you get her a nice present, Mark. I think your mum's still with us, isn't she? I hope you get her a nice present. Yes. <coughs> Before I went there, I popped into Slimmer's World. I went to the early morning Slimmer's World this time. Where do I go on Tuesday? Usually I go 11.30. I went at uh, 9.30. So I could fit everything in I wanted to do on Tuesday. And, um, oh, my God, it's busy at 9.30. Oh, Lord, the queue was uh, coming out of the door. And the people trying to get in and get themselves weighed. Dear me, anyway, I got to myself weighed eventually and apologised to Linda. I said, oh, I'm ever so sorry. I can't stay for your wonderful chats today. Linda, who is queen of Slimming World Wokingham. She's very popular. She's a lovely lady, she is. And I've lost half a pound this week, which is OK. You know, that's all right. Anything lost or maintained is good. That's always good. And it can, you know, it blips up a little bit. So half a pound lost this week. Have you noticed it's got slower? The weight loss has got slower as time goes on. So perhaps I'm getting towards what I should be. Uh, I think I'm 12 stone 13 now, if that's right. And I want to be, I want to be 12. I was... 13.13, so I'm doing quite well with that. Um, so that was Slim as World. Uh, let's just do some of your messages there. Good morning to Bart Summers. Hello, Bart. Nice to see you, sir, on here. Um, uh, oh, thank you, those of you. Oh, there's a few of you sharing the show on your walls this morning. Thank you, those of you that uh, share the show on your walls, OK? Uh, Christina says, I got a new kitten on Monday, eight weeks old. His name is Acme. Is it Acme? Oh, bless. Acme, that was the... Um, the name of the company in the Tom and Jerry films, wasn't it? Acme removals, Acme carpets and all that business, wasn't it, eh? Yeah. Oh, that's it. Danielle, Danielle says her baby was dancing to me singing. I'll have to sing a little bit more for Bailey then. <laughs> does he do a little bit of dancing, does he, now and again? <laughs> all right, so I came back from the grave, uh, had my lunch... <clears throat> Watched a bit of uh, television, got up a guy, had a sleep, got up Tuesday and I did my um, my rice risotto, which I quite like doing. I always put far too much garlic in that. I, do, I don't do too much of that. Usually when I do my cooking, I'll do a great big pot full of stuff and freeze a load. But with rice, you've got to be a little bit careful. You're not supposed to reheat it more than once. And even then it can be a little bit dodgy. So I only make sort of three portions of, of lunch at a time. And some goes in the uh, some goes in the fridge for me to do. So I did my vegetable rice risotto, and that was nice. Yesterday, uh, I, I was so weak, I was so tired on Tuesday. I told you I got this terrible fatigue. Uh, by Wednesday, the fatigue had gone. Yesterday, the fatigue completely went. But I don't feel up to swimming at the moment, so I spent a lot of time doing gardening yesterday. I cut the cut the grass down, 
and um, there's some areas of the garden where it's got a bit muddy so I've got some grass seeds and I've just been sprinkling that and pushing it into the ground when we're just walking over it I mean you're supposed to prepare a seed bed and all that old crap aren't you man what I do when I put new seeds down for the grass I just get the fork and I, I, I make little hot holes you know in the muddy bit scuff it up a bit then I sprinkle the seeds down and I walk on them you know to sl kind of push them slightly into the ground otherwise when it rains it all they all run off again you see it all it pushes all the seeds back off again and that's no good you're going to lose all the seeds that you just bought so I did a load of gardening yesterday managed to put in some of the plants that I've still got to put in I've got I, bought, I managed to buy a load of plants a special offer 20 quid for about 200 pounds worth of prizes because they sell them all off the garden, the online garden places sell them all off when they've they've kind of gone out of season. So I put some more of those in yesterday. Uh, when a bear didn't, but when I went to do my quiz last night, I felt much better. It's the weird thing when I get <clears throat> some sort of cold, my fingertips, not not the tops, but the you know where the um, what do you call that? The uh, the fingerprints are. Okay, where the fingerprints are, they get all like soft. Isn't that weird? Whenever I get some sort of cold, I get soft fingertips. Do you get that? Weird. Anyway, so uh, that that's nearly gone yesterday. So I did my quiz. That was okay. Quiz was all right. And um, came home. Uh, I ordered a new X hose. Have you got an X hose? Now, these are those hoses for the garden that expand in size. And that, that when when you finish watering them, they contract right down and you can literally wrap them around the tap and they're not too heavy. But mine burst. I've had it about three years and I turned it on the other night. I thought there's no water coming at the end and halfway down the hose, the water was pouring out of it. So it's burst somehow. So I went online and ordered one from Amazon, which was a hell of a lot cheaper than it is in home base. I think in a home base were about 50 quid on Amazon. They were 20 quid. So I've ordered one of those on Amazon. But I did look at the reviews. <clears throat> and it seems that these X hoses, the, the expanding ones, are very, very prone to bursting. And, like, you've got to be careful where you use it. You, know, you drag it over stones and that. A normal hose would just, well, that'd be fine. You know, no problem with that at all. But with these X hoses, they can tear and rip very, very easily. You know, so you've got to be careful with those. Um, but I've ordered another one. I thought I'd just give an, another another go because they're a lot easier than dragging around a full size hose all over the blooming place. So there we are. Uh, so I've ordered one of those last night for about uh, 20 quid. And uh, pleased about that. So that's been my last few days. Um, a, a difficult time, to be honest. But we're here again and we carry on like mummy's brave little soldiers. Don't like mummy's brave little soldiers. Uh, good morning to Mary. Non-Irish Mary from Ireland who says, great to hear your sultry voice again. Uh, have you noticed a little bit deeper than it used to be? It's a little bit deeper at the moment due to my illness, due to my summer cold. They call it a summer cold and oh, how they feel. You know that song, don't you? Summer Cold by Neil Diamond. Look it up. It's in the jazz singer. <laughs> Good morning to uh, Adam La Plummer. Morning. Who is late this morning? Shall I go to the back of the class? Now, you know, Adam, you've been a very, very naughty boy. And you know what happens to naughty boys? They get smacked bot bots. Naughty. Please, will, will Adam T of 1MS please report now to the front entrance hall? That's what used to happen at school. If we were bad, if we were bad at school, OK, there would be an announcement come on. Would Reardon from 1MS report immediately to the front entrance hall? And, and you go down there and line up in the front entrance hall with other naughty boys. And one by one, you would be taken into the office by the headmaster or the deputy head. And you would be lashed. After the second time, I quite enjoyed it. I was actually asking for the cane. They wouldn't give it to me after that for some reason. I don't know why. I got detention instead. Oh, that's even worse than it. Detention. How boring is that? So you finish your school at half past three and you've got to stay there another 20 minutes. And it's, you know, when you think about it, it's only 20 minutes, isn't it? Why does that seem so long? I'm so glad. I went to a fantastic school. I'm glad I went there. I think it made me a better person overall. But I didn't like learning stuff. I was just useless. 
I'm not an intelligent person at all. I don't know why they've got me doing a quiz night. <laughs> oh, dear. Mary said we got wooden spoons. What do you mean you got wooden spoons? Hit across your hand, I hope, Mary. Is that why your knuckles keep cracking? Did you get wooden spoons over the hand? I bet that hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> Shania never get in trouble. Never got in trouble. Oh, she's a goody two-shoes, Shania. She walks around with this little halo on her head at school, don't you, darling? I never do anything. Were you? Oh, please don't tell me you were head girl. Shania, please do not tell me you were head girl, were you? <laughs> oh, we got some people sending private messages here. Hang on a minute. Let me see if they're uh, they're waiting to be read out. Let's have a look. Uh, oh, oh, how lovely! Christina sent me a picture of her cat, which I don't, I don't think I can show you that. It's difficult when, to add things at the last minute, so I'll try and remember to show them on the next show, okay? And uh, Daniela sends us a video. I can't watch the videos while I'm doing the show, unfortunately, Daniela. Sorry about that, darling. Oh, Mary says slapped on our knuckles on the back of our legs. Yeah, well, I'm going to bring in a wooden spoon, Mary. If you misbehave in future at my karaoke nights by coming up on the stage when not invited and stealing my instruments, I'm going to whack you over the back of the knees with that wooden spoon, dear. I will do that because you're very... No I bet... Come on, Shana. I bet you... Were, were you jealous of not being head girl? Who was the head girl? Were you all jealous of her? <laughs> Morning, Kevin Webster. <laughs> no, Adam, no, it must be you, dear. We haven't gone offline here. I've got 300 meg here now, thank you. Virgin Media, 300 meg. Thank you very much. Let's have a look here. Um, Bart says, I love the picture behind you. Is that the, um, the one of the Queen? Isn't she beautiful? £10 that costs. It's actually in a, a plastic thing. Um, and I've forgotten, to, I meant to cut the bit off the side there, <laughs> you know, where it's like come out of a uh, a folder type thing. Is it, I thought it looked straight. Does, it, does that look straight or is it that that's not straight? Oh, God, it's not straight, is it? Oh, it is straight. It's that that's not straight, isn't it? I keep trying to straighten this out. Just a minute, then. Is that straight now, or is that now? How's that, is that, that's it, isn't it? Is that it? How's that? Is that better? I'm not very good at doing straight things, I'm afraid. I'm useless. Absolutely useless. Uh, thank you, uh, Mark. The war poem is called For the Fallen. For the Fallen. I'll have to look that up. Hang on. For the Fallen. Maybe I can... Can I quickly do that now? For the Fallen. Uh, published in the Times. I'll have to look at that in another point or something. Mm, but we were talking about that earlier, weren't we? Okie doke. Um, oh, the sea one. Oh, this one here. Ah, oh, well, that was from The Range. Do you know the shop called The Range? If you go in there, Bart, they've got all this. This was about 10 quid. They've got the most wonderful pictures in there, and they're all only about 10 to 15 pounds, some even cheaper than that. When they have sales on, they're even cheaper. It's, it's a proper picture. It's like on one of those wooden frames, and they've got all different ones. I often change the one here. I've got several different pictures I use, and now and again I change them. And uh, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's really beautiful, that. Um, oh, Shania was part of the leadership team. I knew you'd do something like that, Shania. I knew you was part of something very, very important. <laughs> do you know what I just downloaded onto my phone today, Shania? I bought on Apple iTunes, How Redeem a King Divine, and... Parnas Angelicus. Do you know that one? Oh, it's beautiful. I was on the way home. Do you know what I've started listening to on the radio now? Classic FM. How sad is that? I'm just getting older and older. Classic FM. I put it on last night and they had the choir boys um, from King's College singing Parnas Angelicus. Do you know that one? La da da da. Oh, it's beautiful. Driving home and very relaxing. Driving home listening to stuff like that. Good. Uh, Mary says, I used to eat soap on a Tuesday morning to avoid the cow teaching me piano because she used to whack my knuckles with that spoon. <laughs> oh, did that hurt? You wait till I get the big old spoon on the back of your knees if you used to keep stealing my instruments, which reminds me, I must order some more wooden maracas. I keep breaking for some reason. 
Right, couple of uh, stories for you here. I've selected. Now, as you know, I like the garden. I like to do stuff in the garden. In fact, when I finish the show today, I'm going to go out into the garden and do some bits and pieces. Uh, I wonder, do I feel well enough to go swimming again now? I don't know. I might go swimming. I might go swimming. I do a bit in the garden, then I go swimming. And um, I don't pretend to be a professional gardener. I'm not a professional. If you if you saw my garden, you think, oh, it's quite nice. But it's not professional. Um, I like to visit. I've, I quite like visiting gardens. As you know, uh, if you saw the video a couple of weeks ago now, uh, we went to the Savile Garden, which is like part of the Windsor Great Park thing. And we want to go to um, Wisley soon as well. <coughs> Uh, Wisley Gardens, and it's actually a nice little area around Wisley that some of the some of the boys I I I know used to hang around at night. And um, there was an article in the Daily Mail last week: the little green lies that we tell about our gardens. Now, is this you? Is this you? Millions of gardeners are guilty of telling little green lies over their exploits. Research reveals. One in six bought plants or vegetables from a shop, but then claimed they grew them from seed. <coughs> Naughty! If you can grow stuff from seeds, and we, we all can, it's not hard. Seriously, it's not hard growing stuff from seeds. The point is, you can't be bothered, can you? It does require a little bit more care. I don't. I've done, I have done it before. I have grown stuff from seed before. But, you know, it's a lot easier... Just go down the garden centre. There's that plant that's now, I don't know, a month old and has grown so high and you haven't got to worry too much about damaging it. You know, it's, it's harder to damage than, than a seedling. But, of course, you pay for that. You know, you have paid for that. You can get a packet of seeds for about three quid and off that you could get 20, 30, 40 plants. Or you can buy one plant for a tenner. You know, that's the difference. So I don't bother with seeds, I must admit. But if I, but you know, if I had more time, and perhaps I think sometimes you need a greenhouse because when you plant those, when you buy those plants, say I don't know, a, a month old tomato plants, they've all grown in a greenhouse, so they can start them off earlier. If you haven't got a greenhouse, you can't really do it, can you? Although you can do it on the windowsill, you know, in your kitchen or something like that. Anyway, um, the story goes on. <clears throat> Others have hired a professional gardener and then passed off the work as their own. While many simply gave false horticultural tips rather than admit they do not know what they're talking about. <laughs> the growing popularity of television shows such as the BBC's Gardener's World and continuing appeal of, of events such as the Chelsea Flower Show inspires many families to get outdoors and there's no shortage of advice on offer from celebrity growers such as Monty Don to Alan Titchmarsh. However, many still admit they are ignorant on everything from crocuses and tulips to carrots and tomatoes. Not that it stops them from giving others the benefit of their experience. Um, I, I, wonder, I, I, wonder, I hope Vivian's not lying to me. Vivian's the lady who sits next to me in church. She often gives me gardening tips. The latest gardening tip, I, I bought some sweet pea plants and they were very, very small. And I saw these pots, what they were selling in the garden centre and actually outside Waitrose. Uh, they were selling pots with the bamboo canes that go up like that. And these sweet pea plants that were growing up the, up the, up the sticks. So they, were, they had been going for so long, you know. But they were 10 quid. They were 10 quid. Or you could buy the little plants in like a tray... And that was like two quid. And I thought, well, I'll be able to get at least two, two of those pots out of all those plants. So I bought the little plants for two quid and I planted them. And they were growing, but they weren't going up the thing. Now, they were very, very delicate. And I said to Vivian, I said to Vivian, I don't seem to be going up there. She said, you've got to tie them up. I said, but they're so delicate. She said, yeah, you've got to be very careful with them. So there we are. Vivian is, is, is Vivian lying? Perhaps she don't know anything about gardening either. Um, the story says, 10% offer false gardening tips to friends and neighbours. 
The survey of 2,000 adults found that 17% buy plants or vegetables in a store and then cheekily claim they grew them from seeds. <laughs> While 7% have hired a gardener and then pass off the work as their own. <laughs> Dodgy old people. Men are more likely than women to try and bluff their way through a conversation. Well, we all know that, girls, don't we? How many times, girls, have we been told by so-called proper men, promise this, that and the other, just so that they can get their own dirty way? Pfft. Anyone would think I was easy. I beg your pardon? Anyway, the story goes on. The survey by Plant and Grow brand Scott's Miracle Grow. Now, I put Miracle Grow on my plants, and you do get a lot more flowers, and the plants seem bigger. Miracle Grow. Well, I, do, I put it in this little plastic pot thing, attach it to the hose, and then you just spray it on. That's it. And you get more more flowers and plants. In, in actual fact, my, my garden at the moment is starting now to flower. My mate has... He doesn't live far from here... A, you know, 20 minutes walk from here, five minutes in the car. Um, he's got similar plants to myself, but his flower a lot earlier. I mean, a lot earlier. His, his place has been in flower for some time now. Mine is just starting now. It's really starting to burst into flower. I'll do some more photos at some point. But whereas before, you know, I might have a flower there and one there and one there and one there. One, one there. His is all in flower. Now mine is starting to come into flower now. So it's, it's all looking very nice. Anyway, uh, found 86% of Britons have a garden or access to a shared one. But 26% use it only for sunbathing, barbecue or parties. It's a shame, isn't it? Do you know what I really hate? When people, um, they, they, they get a house and they get a garden and then they pave over it. Or worse, decking. Oh, I hate decking. It really looks cheap and awful, I think, decking. Don't you? Oh, it's horrible. If you didn't want a garden, why even buy a house with a garden in the first place? Mind you, if it's a new build, you'll, you'll be lucky to be able to get there out of there at all. Those new build houses, tiny little gardens, isn't they? Like postage stone. Just about enough room out there for a swing or a shed. Horrible. Uh, let's go back to some of your messages then. One moment, please. <laughs> Mary says when she ate the soap it made her foam at the mouth well you must eat that every time you come out then Mary I always see you foaming at the mouth my love are you home now are you back in the United Kingdom of Great Britain are you coming Sunday to our karaoke and tomorrow of course dear let's have a look uh, Christina says we had school suspension when you had to sit in a room with other naughty kids and the irony of it we got pulled out of class and put in school suspension when we had trouble getting to class on time <laughs> Oh, yeah, detention and caning were the things we had. Mark loves swimming. Oh, I think I might go swimming this morning, actually. I think I will try out the swimming. See, even at the end of the day, you know, you might not feel well enough to swim, but you can walk up and down in the pool. That's quite nice. Because rarely is that swimming pool cold that I use. It's lovely up there. <coughs> Good. All righty. Uh, now... As I've been here for a few days, there's a few days worth of birthdays, but I I think it's it's probably a bit mad to go back too far. So I'll do today's birthdays and yesterday's birthdays, if you like, okay? And then we'll uh, we'll uh, wrap up for the day. Thank you very much uh, once again. I really want to thank you for those messages that you've uh, all put on the wall over the last few days. Um, messages. Um, well, I mean, I don't know what to say about it. It's, it's just really nice of you to have done so. It really is. Thank you very, very much. OK. Today's birthday is then. Uh, ice, ice baby. Aisha. Ice, ice baby. Happy birthday, Ice, today. All right, darling. Aisha Hester. 45 years old today. Happy birthday, Ice. Tom Wallace. Hello, Tom. Long time no see. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Tom. Uh, Will McIntyre. Is that Will from Belushi's? I think it probably is. Good morning, Will. Hope you're doing well, sir, and happy birthday to you. Wesley Sebastian is 37 years old today. Wesley is a showman, and he was in Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. If you went to see that, probably about five or six years ago now. He was the And he was also the voice. You know the bit before the show where they have a bit of a voiceover? Wesley used to do that. 
Okay, so happy birthday to Wesley, 37 years old today. Uh, Christopher McDonald, it's his birthday as well today. So happy birthday to Christopher. I'll do yesterday's birthdays as well, because that's 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 okay, isn't it? You know, I mean, it's not too far back. Um, events, let's have a look. Birthdays yesterday. Yesterday's birthday. Ah, oh, Femi, one of my favourite people, Femi. Happy birthday for yesterday, Femi. It doesn't say how old you are. You can't be 30 yet, are you? I'm sure you're not 30 yet. He's very tall. Always comes and sings that song by CeeLo Green. Forget you. La da 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 No swear words, no dear. Happy birthday, Femi. Happy birthday today to Harry James. Uh, yesterday, sorry, Harry James for yesterday. Uh, Brian Beckett was his birthday yesterday. And also my very, very good friend, Paul Dingley, who I haven't seen actually for... It's got to be over a year now, but uh, you had your birthday yesterday. And Paul is is such a nice person. He really is. He works in, he works in a Waitrose. And he's very, very proud of the fact when he's on the till, a lot of people are queuing up, trying to get to his till. So all these other tills are empty and he's got a long queue because he's just popular. So happy birthday yesterday to you Paul okay so um, let's sing the song I've got my buttons pushed there one minute now there we go happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday happy birthday happy birthday to you have a nice day on your birthdays. All right. Um, have I done something wrong here? I know I'm, I, I'm always very careful not to miss out messages from lovely people who have sent in messages. Just a minute. There we go. Uh, Ray says, thank you for showing the show from a year ago. Oh, yes. Do you know it was a whole year ago since Ray Reynolds was in the studio with us? Ray came all the way from uh, where he lives. And um, gosh, I mean, I don't know where the time goes. I really don't. Uh, and that's it. Uh, Adam's late again. That's twice you've been late today, Adam, isn't it? <laughs> He's in and out. And Chris, Chris has just joined us there at the end of the show as well. So thank you very much. That's it for the show today. Thank you very much for joining us uh, to the show, boys and girls. You have a lovely day. Uh, I, I think I will. Do, I wonder, I don't know what to do now. I think I put another couple of plants in because I find that hard work now, bending down and putting plants in, don't you? Oh, it does your back in. I'll do that, then I'll go up to the uh, uh, swimming pool. And my mate's back as well. My mate's, mate's back came back last night from uh, Cyprus. He's been on holiday in Cyprus and uh, had a wonderful time there with his family. He went with his brother and their children and uh, just had a wonderful time in Cyprus. Maybe we can get him, get him to talk about it here. All right, have a nice uh, Thursday and thank you very much uh, for joining us on the show today and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye now.